Okay, welcome back. Uh, I thought for this video I would do something a little different. Uh, me and my lovely wife, who's right here, we're going to be doing an unboxing of the Warlord Games Mystery Box uh, sets, um, the second version two, the second set. Um, just before we get to the actual unboxing, we have both boxes, one there and one there. We're just going to do a bit of a preamble. Now, the first thing I'd like to say about these boxes is that I'm not 100% on them, um, but they are interesting, so that's why I purchased them. So for the purpose of this unboxing, I thought it'd be uh, better to actually, instead of doing a surprise unboxing where I don't know what I got, I thought there's enough of those out there. What I would do is I would pre-open the box, look at the contents, and then do a v evaluation of the contents and show you what's in the box and what the value is. So what I've done is I've gone on the Warlord website and I've priced out all of the things that I found in both boxes so that you can see if it's worth it for you or if it's of any value or not. Um, I was going to order the first mystery box set back in December of last year, of 2020, but I wasn't 100% sure on it. I, I like the idea of a mystery box, especially from like a, a wargaming's perspective and a hobbyist and a collector's perspective. You know, it, it's neat to find um, stuff like this. No companies that I know do this kind of stuff. Um, um, and I did order two of them around Christmas time, but it suddenly dawned on me that I didn't want to get two of the exact same boxes. Like, what what would what would happen if I ordered two boxes and I got exactly the, a replica of box number one in box number two. And I emailed Warlord Games and I said, like, here, here's my concern. If I order two boxes, what are the chances of me getting the same box twice? And they frankly said, uh, there's zero chance. Because what they do is they give it to two different pickers in their warehouse and they send them off to two different areas of their warehouse. And the chances of getting the same thing twice was uh, very, very, very slim. So I said, Okay, I'm satisfied with that. I ordered two. Then the very first unboxing videos came out and I was alarmed at what I seen. Uh, one of the YouTubers, um, he got the same book, the exact same supplement for Bolt Action twice in the same box. In the same box. Two of the exact same book in the same box, which kind of shocked me. And there was a theme starting to appear in all of the unboxings that essentially, apart from maybe one or two small differences, everyone was getting a pretty much the same thing. Um, so I emailed Warlord again and I said, you know what, forget it, I, I, I don't want to take the risk, I'll, I'll spend my $100 Canadian on actually products that I want instead of a, a grab bag of stuff that I may not want. Now why do I have two boxes, do you say? Well, in the sale that they had in January, so I guess they're like their Boxing Day sales, I had accumulated over the year a fair amount of uh, points and I was able to get one mystery box for $60 Canadian, which is about $40 US. And I said to myself, well, if I get even one thing in the box that I could use, it's it'll be worth it. Plus, it'll be a fun experience to unbox something and, you know, that kind of like excitement of waiting for something that you don't know or oh, there's a gift, like a, sm a small child at Christmas. There's <laughs> There's something under the tree. I have no idea what it could be. That's why I ordered it. And then um, I went on a bit of a shopping spree. My wife, you know, she's here, but anyway, I went on a bit of a shopping spree and I earned a little bit more. So I bought a second one and I did it strategically. I ordered the first box or the second box a month after the first box. Just so if the same picker, uh, the chances of maybe mitigating the duplicates would be a little less. So that's what I did. I ordered two a month apart. I pre-opened them. I, I debated with myself where I was going to open them first, live or, or well, not live, but on YouTube um, and discuss the contents with you guys um, as I seen them. And then I thought, you know what? No, there's enough of those unboxings on the internet. I'm going to do mine a little differently. I'm going to already go through the contents. I'm going to evaluate the contents and I'm going to price out the contents using Warlord's own pricing on their website and then uh, give you guys an idea of what the contents was worth to Warlord and what it's worth to me. So we're going to start with box number one. Beautiful, if you wouldn't mind. So first thing out of the box is what? Frigates and Briggs Fotilla. So there's how many miniatures in that? Turn it around. It's uh, from Black Seas. Now luckily enough for me, I do actually collect this game. Unfortunately for me, I, I've painted enough Frigates and Briggs and the 
<laughs> the lining or what do you call this the rigging was such a pain in the butt that although the miniatures are good and the set is good the chances of me actually building this set are slim um, because I, I currently have enough of them although that doesn't mean I can't I won't get back in the in the mood again but that's cool so there's a, a box set of that what's next cruel seas let's see here cruel seas Soviet G5 motor torpedo boats. Well, I don't currently uh, collect Cruel Seas, um, but the thing that I didn't want to get, and I knew I probably would get something from Cruel Seas, but the thing I didn't want to get was I did not want to get any landing craft, because I think landing craft are the most useless miniature, the most useless miniature that I could possibly get in the box. So I um, was actually kind of relieved to get a little a set of little boats you know even if I don't collect the game I can at least paint them up and have them just maybe in a little diorama you know you can always do something with them so that's cool so you know, I want to put these stuff over here so we can see everything together there we go so there's that one now what's next so this I already know what it is this is the uh, like I said I've already gone through the boxes but this is a drudge a drudge a judge dread model preview pack um, and what it has in it is it has, uh, it's hard to see, but essentially it has, right here you have a, a judge right there, and then you have two like gang members. So again, it, it's the same as the Cruel Seas. Uh, it's the same as the, the, the Cruel Seas, is I don't actually collect Judge Dredd, and I'm not really that interested in the lore, although I have enjoyed the movies, the Stallone movie and the, the newer one, the one with the guy the uh, Airmore from Rohan from Lord of the Rings, whatever his name is. <laughs> I can't think of it at the moment. But I do enjoy both the movies, but I'm not going to collect these. But, that being said, it's not a waste of time because at least I have two gang members that can be used in other um, rule systems, and it would be neat one day to paint a judge. So, I'm happy enough with that. I'm actually kind of pleased about that. Next thing is the, the common sight in all unboxings is the the doctor's promo pack and uh, where you get six doctors and the little robot dog now I've seen everybody else online open the pack and go through each doctor uh, but I think if you've looked this up on YouTube at all you've already seen this maybe nine times so I'm not gonna do it sorry I got a warning there about crunching the paper too much on the microphone but anyway yes like I said I'm not gonna go through the models but that's Doctor Who now I'm actually not interested in Doctor Who at all um, but I know a, a friend of mine who might actually really enjoy these so although they're kind of useless to me I might find a use of them with somebody else what's next uh, Blood Red Skies Japanese dice uh, Blood Red Skies is a system that I do have I have played it a couple of times it's it's not a bad system I, I don't mind it and even though it's for Blood Red Skies I mean, dice is dice, you can always use more. Um, I do wish, though, they didn't have these, like, um, the lines for the numbers. If there were actual numbers, it would be a little bit more useful. Uh, but, I mean, it is what it is. It's dice. Everyone seems to get a pack of dice. And then everyone gets these two things again. The laser line and the laser pointer. There's really not much point in reviewing these. Everyone gets those, and what's next? Blood Red Skies Mark II Spitfires. Now, I, I think these are the same Spitfires that come in the starter box. So now I have Spitfires, the whole squadron now. Now I, now I have 12 total. But I mean, out of all the things in the box, this is probably one of the things that I could use the most. So out of everything that you see here, this is the thing that I'm gonna be using probably before anything else. So, you know, at least it's not landing craft and the final thing in the box I'm being told is a rule book a very hefty rule book and a very nicely produced rule book for Beyond the Gates of Antares which is Warlord Games I guess or Warhammer 40k um, offering I guess but it's not a system that I'm actually interested in playing not to say that I wouldn't um, Maybe one day I can find rules online or where they um, where they have the 40k units like Space Marines and, and they have stats for them, maybe a fan-made one, and then I might try it. But I'm not interested in collecting these figures at all. I actually don't 
although they artistically they look fine i'm just they're my sci-fi is in the um the already established ips like um star wars warhammer babylon 5 star trek um all that kind of stuff and BattleTech. so i don't need any more sci-fi so the rule set is kind of iffy i'm about 20 percent interested in it if i can find conversions for warhammer miniatures into the stats for this but that's not to say that the book isn't a nice book it is definitely a nice book uh, so i might be able to trade it with someone who is interested but currently in my area of canada there is nobody but it is a really nice book like it is nice like what's what's wrong with this it's 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 weighty one of the things that actually makes it a little bit more pleasing to me is that it's on the bolt action system which i seem to know which I've played before, so it's not as if it's a completely new type of game. Uh, but it's basically bolt action in space. So that's that. Now, uh, is that the last thing in the box? Okay, we're, I've been told by my director that we're done. Um, what do I think? Uh, I'll give my impressions of the box first, and then I'll give you the breakdown and the pricing of it. My impressions of the box are basically what everyone else seems to think. It's basically the clearance bin at their warehouse um, and I'm of two minds it's probably a smart or an astute business decision on their part if they're moving warehouses from one to the other to not move or spend time moving the stuff that's not going to sell it's basically like moving dust from one corner of your house to the other it's kind of pointless so it's astute in the way that they found a way of clearing that stuff out in a unique way uh, but it's disappointing in a way is that it's there's nothing for lack of a better word, there's nothing jazzy in it. There's nothing amazing in it. Like It's not like you're getting something new off their current line of stuff. So you're not getting any of their... Uh, yeah, Victory at Sea stuff, for instance. You're not getting any of their, their new Bolt Action products. You're not getting... Um, essentially, you're not getting anything that's of value to them. You're getting stuff that's basically sitting and burning a hole in their pocket, uh, in their warehouse, or maybe, you know taking up shelf space. Specifically, Gates of Antares, the Doctor Who figures, the Cruel Sea stuff, and the Judge Dredd stuff. Now, the Blood Red Skies stuff, although, and the Black Sea stuff, although these, these lines, um, I think they should be f fairly, moderately popular. Um, these are the only three things in the box that I find of value to me. And this is the only thing in the box that I find of value uh, to my interests as a hobbyist. So let's go through the pricing. Now that you've heard that I'm, I'm not really that impressed, although it's not terrible value. It's just, yeah, it's, it's just not, it's not, uh, the excitement is kind of dulled on it a little bit. Um, now, if, if they could, if they could do it again, this again, like a third mystery box, but they did it in a specific line like they did a mystery a victory at sea mystery box or a black powder mystery box or something like that or a bolt action mystery box then i think you'd see that fly off the shelves uh, even if it was a bunch of low selling products i think what people want and what i sorry i shouldn't say what people want but what, what i wanted was based on the preview that they did and in one of the previews that they did someone got a, a king tiger tank well that's 62 dollars on their website i was hoping for a king tiger tank uh, I was hoping for any kind of tank, actually, for bolt action. Uh, I would have been happy with any kind of bolt action infantry set. Or a black powder set, a black powder infantry set. Um, yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, anything black powder at all, like a, a cannon, like a blister pack with a single Russian cannon or Russian cannon or anything, that would have been cool. Um, instead, they would seem to have stayed away from those lines, I would say, 90% of the time. I would, I'd say one in 10 unboxings that I've seen have something from those lines in there. And it's in, to me, it's a grave, uh, 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 I guess, a, a contrast to what their official unboxing was like. Their official unboxing seemed to have, although they had these little knickknack stuff and they had the Doctor Who figures uh, and they had a Cruel Sea, the, on the official unboxing of the Cruel Sea had a huge ship in it, a big, took up, took up the whole blister. Uh, but you get these little torpedo boats. Um, so you didn't get anything cool. It, that, that seemed to be a little, maybe a little bit disingenuous on my point. I seen someone get the, the Black Powder 2nd Edition rulebook. 
I've only seen one Black Powder book. Everyone else has gotten Gates of Antares or something else from one of their lines or supplement books that you need the rule book to use. Um, so I guess that's enough griping for now, but what I'll do is I'll, hopefully I've made my point, I might be rambling, but what I'll do is I'll do a cost breakdown in Canadian because that's where I live, um, but you can extrapolate yourself based on what the currency rate is, is essentially in this box for now, it's $89 Canadian. I got it for officially 60. So that's important to know. That's why I bought it. Um, so for my $60 or I guess $89, I got $275 worth of products if I was to buy them at their current pricing. Now it's important to note that the the this this box set of Spitfires is currently the second this thing uh, this uh, mystery box came online. These sets are now half price, so that's including that they think this is worth fifty six dollars. But if I wanted to buy this from them today, it's actually twenty eight dollars. So I priced this at twenty eight dollars. That's why it's not over three hundred dollars in value. It's actually just two seventy five. Now out of that two hundred and seventy five dollars. I have reckoned that only this, this, and this here, and this here, I should put that there, only these three items and maybe him are of any real value to me, and they come out to a total of $119. So you do the math. Out of $90 it would cost me, I got $119 worth of products that I could use. Not things that I need for current projects, but just things that eventually one day I might get around to using. So. I would give it a, about a, a D. If I was giving it a letter grade, I'd give it a D in value, uh, but an A in interest because I was highly interested in it and I think it's a neat idea. So we're just going to push all this to the side, I think. Or you want to put it away, honey? Oh, you're going to put it away. Wow. Okay, we're going to push all this to the side. Yeah, just speed it up here for a bit. And we're going to get the second one out. Now, like I said, the second one I ordered a month afterwards, the first one, just to make sure that. Uh, I minimize the chance of getting the same thing. So, although I know currently what's in the second one, you won't until we show it to you. So, let's go. Ah, uh, yes. Cool seas. Now, what did we get here? We got Japanese landing craft. One of the worst things that I could possibly get in a mystery box is landing craft. A, I don't use cool seas. So, they really have no value to me anyway. B, they're not a scale that I can use with anything else, except maybe the odd board game. So landing craft, I think, are just a clearance item that they've made and no one wanted. So they just chucked it in there and they said, oh, here's here's a $40 worth of stuff we're giving you. Yeah, well, it's basically worth zero to me. Although people might think differently, I think landing craft in a game uh, like that are of no value to me. Okay, second thing is a P-51D Mustang. Now. This I really liked because A, I don't have any uh, P51D Mustangs, so this is a, a current set that I don't have in a game's rule set that I do play. So you get six Mustangs and their cards. I'm very happy with that. And I won't crinkle them, honey, I swear. Seven Doctors and the Dog. Everyone seems to get these. And almost everyone seems to get this, the previous edition of their British Bolt Action figures. Now, I'm actually not unhappy to get these because you can always use them. I mean, even if they're not the current generation of figures, you can always use them. Everyone seems to get them. Did I get the weapons brew in there? Yes, okay, so now they have weapons. In the first, uh, oh, there's a, there's a straggler here. Hold on, let me just free him from his, don't break my Sten gun. You jerk Terminator. Um, so at least you get the weapons. You can always use these for something. I don't mind getting them. I didn't actually get them in the first box, which I was surprised about, but I got them in the second box. So here you have four figures, or is it five figures? Yeah, so it's five British figures for bolt action. They're okay. And here's the straggler again. The Terminator Genesis, Genesis figure. Now, in for researching this... Um, this video, I went on World's website, and you can no longer get these. They're no longer listed. Uh, they redirect you to the, the original um, IP 
holder, which is, I guess, River Horse Games. And I went on River Horse's website, and they don't even have them listed either. So these look like they're completely out of production, and that's probably why they're in these boxes. They probably <laughs> don't know what to do with them, and this is a good way of... Instead of throwing them in the trash, they throw them in here. And uh, so you get what? You get four Terminators. You get two standing and two crawling. It's a bit of a meh on that. Although, I, I wouldn't mind painting a Terminator, so maybe it's not that bad. Next thing. Oh, Hail Caesar. That was one of the things that I, I was meant to mention, as well as the Bolt Action and the Victory at Sea stuff, is I didn't really, I didn't really see that much Hail Caesar stuff. So we were lucky enough to get Celtic Warriors. Now this, again, is 40 figures. It's hard plastic. If you know anything about these ranges, you already know. We're not going to go into the details of what it is. You pretty much already know what it is. Uh, but essentially, and I'm trying to tilt it away from the glare there, um, it's a game system that I already play, and I already have Celts. I'll preview them on the channel shortly. And although mine are Victrix figures, I think they should fit in pretty nicely. Uh, and it does come with the shield transfers, so that's at least something. So I actually am very happy about them. Uh, I don't intend to paint them for a long time, but at least it's something that I can put on my shelf and eventually get to. Yep, everyone gets these. No point in reviewing those. <sighs> and the Terminator figures. So you get eight of the Resistance Fighters, two sprues. Now again, just exactly like the Terminator figures right here, um, you can't buy these anywhere. I can't find these anywhere. Um, I had to go on to Noble Knight Games in the US of their website to find out even what the value of these might be. Uh, so we'll get to that in a second, but these are out of production. They're just toss-ins. But I guess since they are generic, there are generic enough figures, you probably could use them for other for other rule sets. Now specifically I had an idea of using them with my um, Terminator figures. And they actually are a little bigger, but it's not terrible. You know, you could paint them as uh, Marines for the Terminator, or the, not the Terminator game, the um, Aliens game. Um, spe specifically, say that word, specifically this one. You could probably use them for that um, or something else. Anyway, there. A German dice bag without the dice. Um, oh, don't crinkle. Sorry. Yes, that's right. Crinkle does not work well on camera. Thank you for the advice. Um, <laughs> I was back in December ordering myself a dice bag. And if you wouldn't mind handing me that dice bag there behind you, honey. I had the choice between this one and the American one. And I bought the American one. And lo and behold, here a couple months later, I get the German one. So now I have both. So I actually am fairly happy with that. Although I don't know why I would need two dice bags. Next, final thing. Oh, the last thing I'm being told by the director, it's the last thing. And it is their Warlords of Erwan. Essentially, bolt action in their fantasy um, setting. Now, this book is heavy. It's a big book. And it's really heavy, and the quality is nice, and the production values are amazing, um, and the miniatures are nice. And it, it's probably a little, a little bit... How do I explain it? More usable than the sci-fi version, the Antares set, because in here they do have hoplites, although they're under the Amazon line, and they have, they have dwarves. So everyone, if you have sci-fi, you might have dwarves. They've got centaurs. I've got some of them. I mean, I could, if I wanted to, and put a little bit of effort into it, I could. Um, oh, there's uh, there's Celts, right? I, I could probably make a game out of this. You know, there's there is army lists in this game that I could use, that I have the figures to use, I should say. So it's not just all fantasy. They do have some, um, you know, beast men there. <laughs> it's, it's cool. I, I don't, I don't mind it, although it's not what I would have, I would never have ordered it for myself. So I guess in that way, it's okay. So, uh, I guess that's it. Yes. So let's go through the value of this box set. Like the first box set that came in at 275, this box set came in at 279 and that's including the items that are on sale. And the items that are on sale in their web store at this very moment are the Mustangs, are $28. 
And what else was there? Anything else on sale? No, so the Mustangs were on 20, 28 bucks versus 56. So they might consider 56 as their value in the box, but I don't. It's 28. It's whatever I can buy it for at the time of opening. Um, so the usable items out of this box set. Now, I paid full on $90 for this box, or $89 for this box set. I didn't get a discount this time. Um, but the usable value of this is 135 And it has more usable value to me than the first box set, as in it has a box set of figures that I could use and the planes that I can use and the dice bag. And that's really it. The, the Terminator figures are not going to be used for Terminator. They might even just end up one day, end up in my, uh, my seven year old's bedroom, you know, as his first figures he wants to paint. So there's value in that. Maybe I'll have him sit down one day and watch the Terminator movie and then hand him the figures and let him go to town on them, which actually is value in itself, I guess. Um, but I just wanted to break down the, the pricing on their website for this box set so you get a better idea of what I think they think the value is, they being Warlord Games. Now the landing craft, to me these are of zero value. I When I seen them come out of the box, I just took a sigh, ugh, landing craft. So everyone's basically got a landing craft now. What are you gonna do with them? What, what game system are you gonna, if you don't collect Cruel Seas and you don't collect Japanese for Cruel Seas, what are you gonna do with them? They're basically paperweights to me, but they are valued on their website right now at $34 Canadian. The P51 Mustangs, they're valued at $28 on sale, regularly $56, but I would never pay $56 for them. That's why I don't collect a lot of Blood Reds guys. I think it's very expensive for six planes. $56 for six planes, almost $10 a plane. That's, that's GW pricing, um, which I'll get into in a second. Um, what else was there? There was a British uh, figures sprue. This here, I priced out. If you were to buy the old set of figures now, uh, it's $61 Canadian, and I'm getting basically a fifth of a, a quarter of the box. In the box set for fifty for $61, you get 25 figures. This is a fifth of that. So this is about a $12 value in the box, along with his weapons. The Celtic Warriors, or Celtic Warriors, whoever you want to say them, um, they're $49 right now, and that's fine. The Seven Doctors, and this is this is interesting for the first and the second box set. The Seven Doctors, they have on their website for $54. Um, I would never pay $54 for Doctor Who figures. Well, I wouldn't buy Doctor Who figures anyway, but I'd have to be a Doctor Who fanatic to pay $54 for some, you know, monopose. Oh, I'm crinkling, sorry, I'm getting the warning, I'm getting the glare, I'm crinkling. I, I would never pay $54 for Doctor Who figures, but I hope Warlord Games does not think that this is $54 on value to everybody, because this is $0 to me. Um, and as it's one of the most expensive items in the box on their website, I'm kind of concerned, <laughs> because that's... Oh, crinkle, sorry, no, don't crinkle. This is $23. These are $23 for both of them. The book is on sale for $34, regularly $67. So I put the value in at 34. And the Terminators were the hardest thing to value out, as in, because I couldn't find any. But on the um, uh, Noble Knight game store, he did have a set of these in stock. And four sprues of these are $29, and we have two. So divide that in half, it's $14.50. So these are at $14.50. And the Terminators, I couldn't find anywhere in stock, but I extrapolated the price, and it's around $8 for this one sprue. Um, so there you have it. Two sets. Now, my reviews on these sets, probably my impressions, let's say my impressions. My impressions on these sets are that they are sufficient value uh, for their, uh, to, to get back your investment, but they're not impressive. It's not like you were part of an elite group of hobbyists who jumped on real quick and got something cool from a cool company. You, um, for the people who didn't buy the box set, I think all of the unboxings online prove their point that, thank God I didn't buy that. Uh, and for the ones who did buy that, it's more of a, yeah, I bought that, it was cool, but it was nothing special. So that's my review. 
if I was to give this a letter grade, like I did the first one, this is a C. Now, that's the two unboxing done. I'm just going to go into like a two minute ramble about my impressions of this. My impressions of this is, I think they've kind of bamboozled people a little bit. I think they've bamboozled you in a way that on their promotional ads for this box set, they put a box of samurai hard plastic figures. They put a French Charby uh, tank for bolt action and something else. I can't remember now. I wish I had that, the picture in my mind. But essentially they had a set of Hail Caesar plastic warriors, bolt action plastic tank, and Blood Red Skies, I think, figures, uh, planes. Now, if I got a, if, if I got in my box set, Celtic Warriors, a Sharby tank, even a Stuart, or a crappy um, British tank from the desert, like, I don't know what, what they're called, a Crusader or whatever, or a Matilda or a Valentine, or something that I really wouldn't buy on my own because I don't like them anyway, or I don't collect that period of the war. If I got these, a plastic tank, and the P-51 Mustangs, or uh, Zeros, or the base initial release set of bolt action figures, and some motor torpedo boats, even the plastic ones from the starter set, and that was it. I would be ecstatic. That would be well worth the investment to me. Uh, but you don't. Instead, you have a chance of getting one relevant item, and the rest is the unwanted, ugly sister items from their warehouse. Essentially, the dust that they didn't want to carry over to their new warehouse. And I have to congratulate them on the idea, but I'm also very disappointed in the execution of it. Uh, after the initial problems of the first set uh, that they released back in December or November, whenever that was, they promised to improve the second set. Well, the second set is slightly improved, but I mean only marginally slightly, as in people are now getting the weapons with their British figures. Before they were giving out British figures with no weapons. What can you do with them? And uh, my wife just reminded me of the poor fellow who got a chimney in his box with no building to put it on. He just got a chimney. What the hell is he going to do with that? Um, those are some of the things that concern me about this. And if I was Warlord Games and I was thinking of doing this again, which I don't think they will, once they've cleared out all their own stock, I don't know what their motivation would be. Uh, but if there was any other companies out there with several game sets and they were thinking of doing this, my advice would be to do it. You don't have to put as much in the box like this this and this and the Doctor Who figures and the laser pointers and the bag it's all it's all essentially most hobbyists already have this stuff they don't need more um, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from personal opinion here I'm not talking about an official you know um, like I'm not another company that's that's, that's um, reviewing them but they don't need to put all this I hesitate to say the word garbage but they don't need to put all this stuff in there. Even the rule books. The rule books are cool, but if they're going to put a rule book in there, it should be a tossing. It should be a throw in at the end. Hey, we want you to use our system. Hey, we want you to collect our miniatures. Here's a free rule book. You know, or even put a, a, a piece of paper in there with a code to download a free PDF of the rule book, if that makes sense. In, in that way, it would let people who want, were interested in this book, or this game system uh, to take a free gander through it and if they like what they see they can go on their website and order you know order the figures um, if they like them I mean that, that would be something that I would rather have preferred versus the actual rule book I'm not saying I don't like the book the book is nice but I can show you a bin right behind me of rule books that I have that I haven't opened I bought a whole bin two years ago before COVID happened to my local convention and I sold 40 rule books out of the bin a lot a, f a whole bunch and I still have about 80 rule books left I'm looking currently right now at around 25 rule books on my bookshelf um, I'm kind of over rule books uh, but it's nice but I mean if they had to just put in a box of figures a set of planes a tank and uh, motor torpedo boats I said 80 bucks on them I would have been happy 
But what they've done instead, what they've done instead is they've said that you're going to get, let's say, three hundred dollars Canadian worth of items for ninety dollars. Well, that's technically true if you were forced to buy these figures. But I'm not paying fifty-four dollars for that. I'm not paying twenty-nine dollars for that, and I could go on. I'm not paying thirty-four dollars for that. Well, actually, technically sixty-seven dollars if regular price. I'm not going to pay those prices. So to me. The value is more about what I got in the box, and the value was, let's just go back, it was $119 in the first box of usable figures to me, and $135 in the second box. So, you think about that, it's about $30 on the first one from 90, and what, $45 extra on the second one. Not that great of a deal. Anyway, I've rambled on for almost 36 minutes. That's that. We'll be back in about a month with another unboxing, a third one. Uh, we're gluttons for punishment here, this household. Uh, I could actually like show you around here of all the figures, but uh, my wife's saying don't show our mess, so I won't. Again, the light's off because if I turn the light on, there'd be a big glare on the plastic saran of all these boxes. Anyway, have a good day, everybody. Hope everyone's safe, and we'll see you again.